Hello everyone, we've been um, herded back into the boss's office, Chris and I, by the powers that be, um, because we've got some good news for the club. Uh, those of you that haven't been spending too much time examining royal photographs in fine detail on social media will have noticed that Chris here has signed a two-year contract, taking him through till the end of the 25-26 season. Excellent news um, for all of us here. Excellent news for you, Chris, I guess, as yeah. well. Yeah, very pleased. I hope it's excellent news for everyone. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there'll be some people that are disappointed. But no, it's, um, yeah, really pleased. Um, it's nice to, to um, you know, feel... Uh, you know, feel like we've got a secure situation. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's positive, and it's sort of um, it's more of the same, really, because we've always sort of tried to have more than one eye on the longer term and the bigger picture, and sort of try to um, you know, build solid foundations and um, and like uh, rebuild solid foundations. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, so it's obviously great to be rewarded with. Um, a contract extension um, but in terms of you know our sort of approach nothing really changes too mm. much because as I said we've always sort of worked towards um, what do we want Hastings to look like long term and in terms of the short term what can we or what do we need to do or put in place um, to work towards that sort of that end goal really yeah yeah I know obviously speaking to Ben behind the scenes sustainability of the club was one of its first aims mm. and obviously long-term stability the, the to layer on top of that from your point of view he's he's now put this in place for two years yeah um does, do you work to a two-year plan do you still think season on season um obviously you've got day-to-day -day tactical stuff for matches in yeah. hand but how far ahead do you think i think a week's a long time in football <laughs> um no i, I just think I think it depends on um, depends on what part of the club you're sort of focusing on, really, mm. um, and that will then have an influence on where you know how far down the line you are looking. Because um, obviously, if you don't get the short term right in terms of results on the pitch, mm. um, there won't be a long term. So yes. really, it's sort of about prioritising, um, and then off the back of that looking at timelines accordingly for each individual sort of area that mm. you're going after so in terms of the team you know we've always we've always tried to recruit with a view to like, we want to build something over the next 18 months so with the, the players that we've brought in um, all of them have been with an intention of you know we can see them being here at the start of next season mm. so what we what we don't want to do is put a lot of time and effort into players now and then they're not here next year. Yeah, you know, I, I think that because obviously when when we come in, it was very much around stability, sort of consolidating our place in the division, making sure we didn't um, get relegated. Which obviously we've done that, and I think we'd probably be a little bit further along than what we thought we might have been. Mm. Um, you know, we'd have certainly taken a um, competing for the playoffs at, uh, in in March. You know, when we took over. So as I said, you know that that's obviously longer term, we, yeah. or medium to long term. We want to compete to um, try and get out of the division, of course. But we we didn't think we'd necessarily be doing it as quickly as what we are. So um, that's positive. But again, like with all the players that we've recruited and um, players that we promote from the academy, um, it's all very much with a view to um, longer term, and we can see them forming part of our squad at the start of next season. Yeah, that's a. Uh interesting point that because in semi-pro football you quite often see this flurry of activity in yeah. june and july don't you around contracts yeah. and that sort of thing we've obviously more good news that charlie has just signed already so that's done and dusted yeah it's great news. um and you've got a few quite a few players probably on one year contracts do you start working now to retain um, those players so in terms of players that are definitely with us next season albeit you know, somebody comes in and buys them. Mm. Um, you know, we've got Charlie Granger, um, Tom Chalmers, Freddie Legg, Kier Moynes, uh, Tommy Fagg, um, JJ Walker, um, we're what Jamal Banger, and we're working on 
another five or six yes. uh, of the current squad to then um, try and tie them down <coughs> for next season. Mm. So in terms of what we're currently working with and whether or not we're going to be continuing that good work um, come start of this next season, we're in a really good place. So that, that was, you know, when I, when I was here before, we always, um, there was always um, succession planning, like, you know, if this player moves on, have we got this player in the building that we can potentially promote? If not, do we have eyes on players that we can potentially recruit? That, that still is taking place. Um, but probably more so than ever now, we're aggressively trying to retain um, our best players or players that we feel over time will improve and in, in increasing their sort of value to the team. And and yeah, so that, that's sort of where we're at. And we, I think we've been really proactive with mm. with our with um, with as I said, succession planning and, and making sure that we've got a competitive squad, not just now but also longer term. Yeah. No, it's interesting from my point of view. I find that the teams that quite often come to the pilot field and play well against us, when I'm reading out their team sheet, I recognise a lot of the players yeah. from the last time they were here. Yeah. And so that having that group that knows each other, we talked about Horsham at the time, mm. I think a team that's got that bond yeah. and they've got the skill obviously as well and the, yeah. di and the discipline. And that, that really makes a non-league team better, doesn't it? Because you do see a lot of churn. Oh, yeah, 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 turnover is yeah. massive. But I think really that was one of the the sort of um, key aspects of the previous team that we built, that team's success. Because mm. initially there was quite a high turnover of players as we were trying to uh, rejuvenate that group. Um, but then once we, once we got to a point where we, we felt pretty happy of what we've got the the group stayed pretty similar for at least a couple of years i mean there was one or two changes but that was for good re good sort of success stories really where players have gone on to play higher which yes. is obviously something that's that, understandable yeah it's something that we're you know i think as part of um the attraction of hastings united and um, players know that we have a very good track record of of taking a player from a level and then them going on to play higher. So, um, but other than that, as I said, the, the continuity of the the playing squad was uh, was uh, was really important to that initial team success. And that was part of part of my brief really when I first come in is you know making sure that we're building a team which is going to be playing for Hastings United over the next couple of years. Not not seeing that huge turnover of players, but that again is another benefit of. Mm. Um, recruiting players locally, producing your own players who who have more of a connection with the football club, um, where it goes beyond a pound note. So, yes, for so sure. Yeah, that's another real, real positive angle of, as I said, developing your own or recruiting players from the local area, definitely. Mm. And just sprinkling in that sort of just a sensible use of loan players and players from out of, out of area when. When you spot a good one, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I mean, in terms of loans, I've never been a massive lover of loans because mm. I ultimately they're not your player. Yeah. But I think we've been really fortunate with the type of person that we've brought in this year. Obviously, Jack Bates was at the club, mm. knows all about myself and the expectations, knows what it's like to be a Hastings United player. So that was really a slightly... Um, different situation in terms of loaning people whereas Sam Gale obviously has, has never been here but he's such a great character great yeah. lad um, and to be honest that is pretty consistent I mean all the lads that we've 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 had for, on loan from Gillingham um, that I've experienced like Jack Tucker and now Sam Gale they've, mm. they've, they've both been an absolute credit so they haven't felt like loan players they've, they've felt like they're, they're permanent signings and they're really invested in what we're trying to do so so that's that's been a real, real success. And then in terms of players from away, I think again you're trying to recruit good people, good mm. characters, um, you know. And, and we've done that, as I said, like John John Ufer, who was brought in from the previous regime. I tried to sign multiple times previously. Um, very very good character. Sam McCoy, one of the best people you'll ever meet. Yeah, right. They're real real good people. Charlie Granger, again, one of the best people you'll ever meet. So. I think if you, you know, relevant of where um, the lads are from, if they're good people and they're here for the right reasons, it's, um, 
you know, it's it, it's definitely more with a view to longer term. Brilliant. And the coaching squad, so obviously a good young coaching squad. Yeah. Um, really, that's your that's your unit for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I mean, we, we've we've obviously things have obviously gone very well. So what you don't want to do is disrupt um, something that's working. Yeah. Um, but then equally, it's a balancing act because what you don't want to do is and stand still. So we, we've felt short term that you know what we've got is working for us but whether or not that that's the case longer term um i think remains to be seen i mean we, we, there's a couple of people that i've spoken to about potentially coming in to join um the first team staff similar really to when i was first in charge and we ended up bringing pete heritage in mm. um who gave us as a staff something completely different yes uh, he was you know, obviously, ex-pro knows the club like the back of his mm. hand. Been there, done it. Incredible character, right? As I said, <laughs> incredible character. Larger than other, larger than life. Doesn't yeah, that's really one cut it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he, but he was brilliant in terms of the staff having a really nice blend of different personalities. Yeah. So, because I'm quite boring, as you can tell. Um, so it was, it was really important to have something different. So. Um, that's something that we are looking at longer term or medium to long term. But it doesn't make sense to make any changes between now and the end of the season because, no. as I said, it, it's working. It'll probably be more in the off season once we take a step back and go right where we what we're we missing from a staffing perspective and then fill in the gap there. Yeah, yeah. You've been out with the under 19s this afternoon mm, yeah. over at Horsh over Horsh, <coughs> right? yeah. Um you have a you have a style of play. Yeah, that's quite it's quite noticeable. Your your sort yeah. of blueprint yeah. is that something again having that two years and having the time and the staff at your disposal. When you're over with those younger players, you're looking to sort of bed in that style right down the the club. Uh, I think from a first team perspective, like long the short is, I think it's the best way to win games mm. of football. Um, so. That is the the be all and end all really of why we do it at first team level, and touch wood, the you know sort of my first team managerial record over, albeit there's a gap in between, but over a period of time, sort of probably five odd years, I think you look at look at the record, you'd suggest that that's probably vindicated. Mm. Um, so. In terms of, as I said, at first team level, that's why we do what we do. Um, but from a development perspective, and this is also with a view to the first team as well, is you know I also believe it's the best way to improve mm. improve players. You know, it's 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 um, more technically demanding. It's more tactically challenging. Uh, really basic, but. If you have the ball, you're going to see more technical development in individual players and yeah. as opposed to kicking the ball to the other team and mm. them having the ball. Mm. The really basic, um, sort of layman's terms. But in terms of from a development perspective with the academy age groups, there's no huge demand on you've got to play this shape, this formation, even this particular style really, because the first team are doing it. Yeah. It needs to be what is best for the individual Still players. Still tailored development. for that group of players? Yeah, well, what's, mm. be what's best for the individual's development? Mm. I mean, for me, the only, the, uh, the only club that, uh, the only team at the football club that really needs to win games of football are the first team. Yes. Well, ultimately, that's, that's where my role is going to be defined of whether or not it's a success or not. Mm. Um, obviously, there'll be other things to factor into it, but in the main, that's ultimately what you're judged on. Um, so in terms of underneath that mm. we're putting in place a new B team which is going to be a massive positive um, like an old fashioned reserve team basically oh, yeah. that's going to be a huge positive and what, what, what league would that play in will we uh, have to organise something with other clubs no 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 we, we'll be going into a league so it's a suburban league so it's a, it's a very competitive league against decent non-league sides Bromleys Wokings Aldershots teams like that so it's okay, good. very competitive yeah. but as I said it's it's a bit of a throwback to the old reserve league, yeah, so yeah. that that will fill the gap between first team and under 19s. But again, even in terms of the B team, 
down, it's very much, you know, what's best for the, the individual players. And you're also, I suppose, the, bit, the biggest proof of the pudding with those teams is producing players for 100%. the first team. 100%. So, yeah. so our under-19s could lose every game between now and the end of the season. But if at the start of next pre-season we have a list of players that we feel are potentially ready to break into our first team, that's success. Yes. Whereas mm. if they won every game, but at the start of pre-season there was no players, you go, well, no, that's, that's, mm. that's not success, that's mm. failure. So again, that, that is the big thing. What do the individual players need? What, what do, you know, what's going to help them strive towards their maximum potential and then work back from that? So if, for example, you know, we've got two really good centre forwards in the under 15s, and we've got uh, two centre midfield players, and we've got two old-fashioned wingers, and we'll play four-four-two. Yeah. And if, for example, we've got two centre midfield players that are really, really top performers at their age group, and they're finding it really easy within their games program. Now, obviously, they can play up with an older age group, mm -hmm. but there's all sorts of challenges around that. So. As part of their, actually, what we don't want to do is play those midfielders in a midfield three where they're potentially, potentially matched up with the opposition. What we want to do is we want to play 4 4 2, overload the two centre midfield players and really give them a massive stretch. Mm. So rather than have a holding midfield player and two attacking midfield players and almost like have these specialist roles, it's no, you two are going to be two centre midfield players. You've got to work box to box, but that's part of their individual development and yeah. actually trying to <clears throat> stretch the players that little bit mm. more to try and um, accelerate their individual development. So I, I think everything leading to the first team, as I said, I, even at first team level, I, we're really conscious of making sure that when we're reflecting on sessions, you know, have we done what's best for the players when we're planning sessions? Right? This plan needs to work on this. Will Harley, as an example, yeah. he needs to work on his first time finishing. So mm. we need to make sure that he has opportunities to practice that across the week. Um, and again, it, that, that's very much the sort of the attitude really is, is how can we get the best out of the individual players? Yeah, so so really the, the two-year extension, all it means is in the main, you're doing the same thing yeah. just with a longer time frame. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you, can, you can see the... You can potentially see the fruits of the labour, yeah, because you've got that much more time to see, see potentially the end result where hopefully they're breaking through to the first team. Um, so yeah, and I think that's that's the challenge really because first team football and being a first team manager can be so short term, mm. and it's having the discipline to to know that you're going to be doing an awful lot of things that potentially you're not going to see the benefits of, yeah. But ultimately, I think if you can walk out the door after two years, six months, ten years, and you can sort of say, Do you know what, I've I've left it in a better place. I've you know I've done what I believe is best for the football club, the organisation beyond my stay. You know, I, I I don't think you can go too far wrong, to be honest. No, no, and and as part of your role, I mean, you're you're first team manager, first team coach. Yeah. Um, you're out and about with the younger teams as well. Yeah. You know, you you. You've been working with um, East Sussex College as well over yeah. at uh, Open Evening last yeah. week, weren't you? So yeah, busy. That's, that must be interesting doing that, those sort of partnerships. That's good. Yeah, it's um, th th that college partnership with East Sussex College has been re really productive. Obviously, like Jack Bates, Ben Ward, uh, David Radari, Ansu Jane, all of these boys yeah. have 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 um, are products of of that relationship. So. Um, the more that we can uh, drive the level within that uh, environment, the, the more benefits we'll see at Hastings United Football Club. Um, you know, the more players we'll produce. And you know, what's really nice is, is when you look at local football, whether it's step five, step four, so many boys that we've worked with as part of our full-time programme mm. at the football club in partnership with East Sussex College, you're seeing so many of them out playing football, playing a big part in in the local football scene. And that, that's also success. So it's not just, as I said, like 
players progressing into our first team and then going on to get a move like Jack Bates to Derby yeah. or like Ben Ward to Burnley, it's it's also actually uh, their their best level might not be uh, at Hastings United first team, but that doesn't mean them then going away to then play step five isn't isn't success. So that's a, that's a really productive partnership, and you know we're looking to improve it as well. So we, we've we've reflected on the previous. Um, set up. We've looked at the current set up. You know, what did we do well in the first place? You know, what yeah. can we, what, what can we do better? And as I said, we're going to really, really attack it. Um, in the well, we're, we're doing it already now. To be honest, we're aggressively recruiting for it now. We're putting in place different processes and how we're going to um, set up the working week to make sure we we're constantly sort of improving that program. So that 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 bodes really well. Yeah, and that, and that's really all about players getting all the training time they need, and also getting a good education at the same time. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Well, and that's uh, got to be a good thing. Yeah, it? like if if, if uh, the contact time is so important, so so being able to being able to um, like spend four or five times a week with the boys mm. is is a huge is a huge um, positive. Uh, on top of that, if you know they're getting a decent academic um, experience as well I think they can come away from that two three years um, you know in a better place than how they walked into it so yeah that's uh, it's uh, yeah, ideal yeah fantastic and um, you do uh, James Hopkins has got you doing your work with the yeah. Haces Bean Business so have you signed up for most of those do you <coughs> enjoy doing that it's almost an ambassadorial role that isn't it uh, in some ways yeah no I, I enjoy the <laughs> I enjoy the um, the different um, subjects really that we cover so even though obviously it's a football club and I'm a football manager mm. um, we try not to in the Hastings Means Business um, get togethers it, we try not to it's not so much about football and the fine detail and this player rolling outside and this player doing mm. this and this is how we're going to press it's more around how um, football can then translate to different working environments and, and businesses and um, certain industries. So that was a previous, the previous um, presentation I'd done was more around how leadership and process um, and putting in place good process can, can uh, lead to obviously success and outcomes, mm. but also how that translates, not just to football, but how that goes across different working environment so yeah no I, I enjoy that it's good no there, there's definitely a crossover man management is man management yeah. um you know, like i said a process an outcome yeah. all that sort of thing you know managing a business is you know obviously a different in some ways but there are a lot yeah, of absolutely. similarities so i think yeah. it is a, an interesting I, I think people are very interested in that i think they do um enjoy seeing it yeah yeah, yeah. no it's um you know so I mean that that in itself just shows you know, the fact you've been with the under 19s this afternoon. You're back for training. You were at be you were at um, the college last yeah. week. Yeah. You're, you're doing James's business forums, and then obviously we've got real cup tie tomorrow. Yeah, Tuesday evening. It's a quite a big job, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's enjoyable though. It's enjoyable. Yeah. Um, as I said, it's. Um, I can remember when when I rejoined. The club and even from my first um, time as manager you know I, obviously there's, there's learning from the, the, the previous experience because I was literally like here 24 hours a day virtually mm. but, um, so I've tried to try to find a better balance but you realize it's, it's very difficult and, yeah you know like I'm, I'm all or nothing as a person yeah so I, I'd rather I'd rather throw everything at it and have no regrets than yeah. than uh, potentially sort of concentrate only on this part. Even though if, if I neglect that, that's going to end up affecting that. So yeah. I'm really conscious of of. I, th I think I'm pretty aware that obviously you see the result on the Saturday, and you know that's the outcome. Mm. But there's so much stuff behind the scenes which will contribute to that positive outcome. So so it's really important. Um, it's not just one team, it's the whole club and trying to contribute across the board. Yeah, well, hopefully doing these sort of things, we're giving people a glimpse <coughs> into that yeah. work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, definitely. Um, pleased for you. Congratulations Thank again. You Thank you. Um, 
I think that's great to just to talk it through rather than um, sort of nitpicking over a certain game. Quite nice yeah. to talk about the bigger picture, isn't yeah, it? Definitely, yeah. And um, give people a view of that. Not talking about referees. Exactly. Yeah. No, we, don't, we don't talk about referees. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no not, for, not for the moment. I'll have anyway. a gag in order, I think. Yeah. So if I keep yeah. Doing no, well, yeah. I'm doing my best. You, said, you mentioned it, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, I can't <laughs> help it. Yeah. I know. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you so much for your time no, again. We'll you. leave you to get on. I know you've had a long day. Thank you. Um, yeah, look forward to seeing you over at Lansing tomorrow. Brilliant. Thank you. Excellent. Thank Cheers, you Chris. Thank you. Thank you.